All right, we'll call this meeting to order. At 6.34. Okay. This is the uh, Wednesday, April 8th edition of the Board of Selectmen meeting. We're doing a virtual meeting. And the, uh, we've called to order. Uh, could everyone make sure that you've muted your microphones with the exception of Selectman Doreen and Selectman Ziobro. Uh, now we're into public comment. That's uh, the next piece of agenda. I'd like to comment. Hello. Can I go ahead? Uh, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, Amanda Thompson, um, do you need an address or any of that? Uh, street, fine. Okay. Uh, Copper Hill Road. Um, I just wanted to thank the selectmen for letting the scouts join in this meeting. Uh, they'll be on probably till about 7 o'clock, uh, just so they don't have to stay for the whole thing. But they are working on citizenship of the community, so uh, they wanted to attend this meeting and then listen to at least one issue and the differing opinions on that issue. So thank you for having them. You're welcome. Paul, can we hear each other now? Yes, I had to use the phone thing. Okay. We're good. Okay, good. Okay, we're into public comment. Any other additional public comment? Yeah, I'd like to comment. Sure. Um, so I, I have seen I, the I governor's have, new excuse, order. Excuse me a second. If I, could, me? if I could just ask you to identify yourself in the street. Oh, sure. Paul Calabas, Turkey Hills Road. Thank you. Um, so uh, I saw the governor's revised order 7S and under item seven, it appears that there's an option now for municipalities to do remote voting. Uh, so I wanted to know if that's gonna be a topic uh, for both the Board of Selectmen and Board of Education as to whether we're gonna move forward with, with uh, a process and, and apply for a process where we can have a mail-in vote for the budgets. Uh, the we are studying that option we it is under consideration it's something we will discuss tonight but not anything that we're going to uh, make any decisions on as of yet things have been changing so quickly every hour things seem to be changing uh, and so uh, we have uh, understanding that in a couple days additional information is going to be coming down on that because we're not the only one that is struggling with the public uh, meeting sort of thing and uh, there's supposed to be more direction coming down. So we uh, will discuss it tonight shortly. We uh, will not make any decisions uh, and it's not anything that the Board of Ed has uh, uh, gets involved in, but it would be something that the Board of Finance would, would have to get involved in. So uh, it would be the Board of Selectmen first. So so I know that Tammy uh, Zemlitowski is, is uh, checking on this issue with uh, through the legislature to see and get clarification. So will there be no vote on budget until we get clarification? Yes, because we will certainly make clarification prior to May 5th, which is uh, the when the next meeting of the, well, the Board of uh, Finances, August, I'm mean, sorry, April, April 21st. 21st, and then uh, the next meeting after that is the public, uh, uh, that's the public hearing, and then the next, uh, let's see, the, no, the hearing's on May 5th, right? Um, I'm not it's sure. changed so often, <laughs> Paul. We, but anyway, it's, the, uh, we do have it it's May, it is May 5th. So the public hearing will be May 5th. Uh, so certainly, well, I think, certainly I think the Board of Finance has canceled two of their meetings. So how are they going to consider this? They're going to consider it at their April 21st meeting and then at their uh, May 5th meeting. So we, uh, the short answer is we will have answers uh, to, we will have clarification way before that, of which we certainly will communicate. Okay, and, and my other question was the, 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 uh, the poll or the comments that are going on in the city's email, are those gonna be made public? And uh, could you repeat that please, Paul? Um, 
the emails that you are collecting on budget input via the town's email website. I believe those are subject to Freedom of Information Act. Uh, so that are you planning on publishing uh, those uh, comments so that everybody can see uh, what those are? The uh, Board of Finance is the one that, that that's their mailbox. They would share the correspondence like they always do when they share correspondence. Okay, so there will be a place to go look at the input that's been received. Well, that, uh, that uh, I'll need to work out with them. I do, do know that when they receive correspondence at a normal meeting, that's not a virtual meeting, they, they speak to the, 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 they speak to the email, they speak to the letter, and then they move on to the next one or to the next piece of business. So I'm, um, you know, I would not speak for the Board of Finance other than the fact that it is, you're exactly right, it is a public document and it will be available. I don't know how that process is gonna work through the Board of Finance. If it's a Board of Select, then you know, we'd make a decision right now. Okay, well, I, you know, I think either, either reading it, reading the input received at the meeting or providing some link to where um, you can certainly redact people's email addresses and whatever not, but you know the public should be able to see what that input is. And like I said, that's certainly something from the Board of Finance, and I certainly will pass that recommendation on to them. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right. Moving, speaking of correspondence, moving into correspondence. The um, census uh, is, uh, paper census forms uh, will be mailed to people at the end of April if they have not participated yet. Oops, getting a little feedback. Uh, uh, state of Connecticut census completion rate is 47% and the East Granby completion rate is 53.8. So. The town of East Granby is doing a good job filling out the census at this point, uh, and uh, if you haven't filled out by the end of April, you'll get a paper Jim. census to fill out. Jim. Can you mute all those microphones? I thought I was. Let's hand, see. Hand me. Ooh. Uh, John, you're three, you're, you're 04, right? Um, 8605, uh, 3004, yes. Yeah, okay. So, you're the only one that is not. We're having a technical difficulty, sorry about this. Uh, it appears that everybody is muted. If you're not muted, please mute. And um, Don't mute Joe. And we will not mute the, fir the select mentoring. We, <laughs> it, it is, unless he did it himself. Okay, he did it himself. Okay, all right. Uh, moving, uh, next piece of correspondence is Executive Order 7S, Section 7, regarding in-person voting requirements. Uh, the, uh, uh, the original uh, seven, uh, Executive Order 7 stated that uh, the meetings, uh, there wasn't going to be the referendums, uh, and uh, as was alluded to by one of the residents, uh, order, uh, that was 7B, Order 7S, says uh, uh, that it appears that it is something that is uh, going to be allowed um, because of the the uh, the whole um, turning around of this and things going on the fly we've asked for clarification of that as I said uh, in my response so we'll go forward uh, with that and when we get the response we'll let everybody know and Jim I had one question uh, there's one thing in here about a one percent um, cap. I mean, I don't know if you can get clarification on that also. Yeah, the, uh, do, do you, you have the page it? on that, John? Because um, I, I think it's on special purchases, if I remember correctly, but I'll just, how far out are It says, at pro, pro, appropriations in an amount in excess of 1% of the current year's total municipal budget. Okay, let's see. It's towards the middle. Okay, yeah, I got it. Jim, I don't know if you can repeat back what, um, John is saying, but we can't hear him. Uh oh. John must have muted his phone. I'll turn it up it's a little. It's like really, really quiet. You can hear it like background noise, but barely at all. Okay, we'll ask for a sound check from Selectman the over. Can, can you hear me better now? Doesn't, doesn't. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's really it's not quite quite good. 
I'm even having a tough time with you, Jim. So if you could speak closer to your microphone, absolutely. As well as the other person. Absolutely. Okay. Um, hopefully, uh, put it right to my mouth right. next, time. <laughs> next time. Okay. All right. So we'll uh, we'll go into the next one. Then the. Uh, so anyways, not, uh, notwithstanding the foregoing, if the legislative body and budget making authority, if they are separate entities or taking action specified in one or two below or any action above, which involves an appropriation in the amount of excess of 1% uh, without complying uh, with the in-person approval requirements normally required by state, they uh, shall make specific findings that such actions are necessary for the orderly operation. So there's a lot of legalese. We'll get that. Okay. Clarify too. Hey Jim. Yes. Sorry. Um, we can't hear you. You keep breaking up. There's a lot of um, confliction between you and John. Is there a way that John can mute his phone while you're talking, and then when John's ready to talk, he can unmute and then talk into his phone? Is that possible? And I also am moving the package away from me so I can move the laptop closer. Sorry. Well, no, thank you. I don't know of a way to, know of a way to unmute, unmute other than just put my finger, over, my the finger over the microphone. Is it his cell phone? Yes. 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 On your cell phone, you have mute on your... On your speaker, yeah. FYI, guys, for the future, if you get yourself a headset and a microphone that fits on your face, these go a lot better because then people can hear you yeah. uh, rather John than trying, if John trying to use your phone. Earbuds, you might not have the feedback. Okay. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying uh, I've run thousands of these, and that usually fixes everything once you go to a headset. Thank you, Paul. It sounds like a great suggestion. I'll try it. Okay. Getting back to where we were, the, um, my apologies to the viewing audience. Uh, it actually went smoother the first time than it did the second, but we'll work it out. And with the great suggestions we've had from the community, uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, okay, so the next uh, order of correspondence is executive orders that impact municipal operations. It's the capital report from CCM. Uh, it's got a pretty good summary of everything that's going on. Uh, Paul and Amanda, are you hearing me better now or are you still, am I still breaking up? Okay, you're hearing me better? Okay. I needed to be closer to the laptop. This is better now, that's good. Good, okay, thank you. Uh, next order, uh, next uh, correspondence is the uh, uh, from Governor Lamont urging volunteers from the general public to participate in COVID-19 response efforts. Um, a lot of information that's been coming down. Uh, we received a notice from the United Way that they are helping three households in, in East Granby. So I wanted to let folks know that the United Way actually does a, a really good job of uh, helping people in need. and. They're helping three uh, households uh, here in East Granby. Jim, have they already have they picked already the three, picked households, three or, households or are people still eligible to apply? The, uh, the households have been uh, submitted by the social services director as requested. Okay. The um, February financials are in the package here. Uh, for the general government, uh, we're trending slightly uh, uh, favorable to budget for the year ending. This is through February 29th. Next meeting will be the March financials. Uh, and we should be trending around 66%. Uh, we're, we're, we're overall, there's uh, four or five lines that we're watching. Uh, data, we're uh, $2,500 unfavorable to budget. Police um, is uh, when you add in the Connecticut State Police bills that they come at the end of the year, we're trending $10,000 unfavorable to budget. 
Fire marshals is $300 unfavorable to budget. Uh, Public Works is trending $21,000 unfavorable to budget. Uh, it's, uh, even though it wasn't a heavy snow year, it was a heavy sleet, snow, slash rain, slash freezing rain, uh, and uh, that uh, we're, uh, we're ahead of where we thought we would be when it comes to the uh, spending on labor. Uh, Social Security, it's been trending $4,300 in favor of the budget. That's a formula issue that we've solved in the upcoming budget. And uh, the RCC is uh, trending $5,000 on favor to budget. Uh, and uh, when you look at everything else, like I said, yeah, everything else is online or under, and we're slightly uh, uh, under uh, on the uh, total expense at this point. Jim, I had a question, a question about the, uh, about police, the uh, line. police line. Is there anything, is there that's, anything driving that's driving it higher? It because it's like we have a full complement of officers. We shouldn't have too much overtime. Yeah, the, uh, it was uh, regular overtime because of snowstorms and things like that. I'll give a detail in the next one. It's gone down a little bit in the current month. Also in the uh, package of correspondence is the, uh, uh, we're looking to go out uh, to replace the note that ends in the middle of July. Uh, and uh, so I just have the calendar there of the things that we need to do before we eventually uh, uh, go uh, to the marketplace in, uh, let's see, the, we go to the sale will be July 1st. So we're putting all the information together. Just wanted the board to understand that we're going to renew, as we've said we would, uh, the note. So we had the current note that we have now and then we have the upcoming note, uh, and then after that we'll go into bonding. Uh, and at this point, the current bond, uh, the current note and the future note uh, are interest only. Jim, oh, last time I asked time about I asked maybe looking to refinance look everything into this year. I don't know if you had someone look into that. Yeah, I did, John. The, uh, at this point, uh, especially with the coronavirus uh, impact on the municipal bond market, uh, it's not a favorable time at this point. Uh, if we were looking for a bond, we'd be at the 5% range, uh, and the temporary cost of the money is under a 1.5%. Okay, so, well, big so, difference. Yeah, and, and, and I, I did. I certainly uh, we, I had the... Uh, our bond consultant uh, worked the numbers, and at this point, because of the uncertainty, the best play is actually to renew the note. Okay. Uh, we uh, also have put up signs in our parks uh, uh, saying that we like people to use the parks, but they need to be uh, have the social distancing. Uh, we um, uh, the town uh, playgrounds are all closed because by their nature you can't you know be going down a slide and a swing uh, and maintain six foot distance. Uh, but right now we're trying to keep uh, the uh, parks open because we realize it's, it's an activity that people can do, but please use social distancing. And you know there shouldn't be any basketball games at this point or baseball games or things like that where there's a, a, a large amount of people or you know right now five is a large <laughs> amount of people. So uh, we would appreciate everybody's uh, uh, cooperation on that and one of the things that we've had to do is uh, you know there was a, a pickup basketball game that happened and you know, hate to be enforcing things but you have to and so uh, you know we, we encourage the use of the parks we discourage the use of the basketball courts or the soccer fields or the baseball fields. Jim one um, thing that the Farmington Valley Health District is publishing a series of Facebook posts and one of the concerns also with the parks was not just the social distancing, but if there's kids who are playing on things, um, my understanding is the virus will remain on there for a period of time, especially if it's metal or uh, plastic. So if people are going to the park, they may want to bring some wipes with them to wipe things down before their children get on it. And I'm glad you said that, Joe, because the, that's the major reason why we closed the, the playgrounds is because okay. we can't keep them clean and sanitized. Okay. Uh, next uh, correspondence is uh, from a resident who wanted more information released from the by the Farmington Valley Health District, and I just gave you the, the string of information there. It's something that the uh, health district is is uh, 
is handling with the, the resident who wrote the letter. And um, let's see, the bond commission meeting was today, so hopefully that means that it actually happened and that the municipal aid will be released. Uh, or, uh, the grants and aid, Town Aid Road and LOSIP are things that would be released. And um, th when you add that all together, that's about $900,000 worth of revenue to the town. So hopefully the meeting was held and uh, we'll be getting our checks shortly. I know the I want to check there. on that. I heard that there might have been some technical difficulties in conducting the meeting. Oh. So it, I'm not sure if it was continued or they were able to complete it, but the governor was saying that there were some technical difficulties. Okay. Thank you. I, I did not I did not realize that. Jimmy sure, skipped a couple items. What's that? He skipped a couple items. Oh, what did I skip? Route 20 speeds and revised board of finance budget calendar. They received an email from a resident on uh, on the speeds on Route 20, and I talked to the state police about that. Uh, and what was the other one, John? Uh, the board of finance calendar. The board of finance calendar is the 21st. Is the next meeting of the board of finance, and then the public hearing will be May 5th. I don't know if they got shuffled up. It's, am I on schedule now with yes, this? Yes, you are. Okay, good. Uh, Controller Limbo sent out his uh, monthly uh, financial picture of the state. Uh, and um, currently, prior to the coronavirus, uh, it's, uh, there's a deficit of $170 million. Uh, so the legislature will have to deal with that. Also, because of the, um, the coronavirus uh, epidemic, uh, or pandemic, I should say, uh, the uh, receipts that they're going to receive from uh, taxes are going to be less. So um, I'm sure uh, uh, they'll have to take some action. Some of that action may be using um, some of that action may be using uh, the rainy day fund. Jim, there's one thing not notable on in that on page four, the uh, unemployment claims. It goes from like 1970 through 2020, and the spike is so much bigger than anything anyone has ever seen yeah, before. Uh, so absolutely, John, you're absolutely correct. Uh, the uh, I, let's see, what did they say? The initial claims went from 3,400 to 25,000, uh, and I saw numbers that were higher than that too. Right. So it even makes 2008 look like. It's, you know, regular a regular day. Right. So. But but with that, you're you're absolutely right, and and this is going to be significant numbers going forward. But we're looking at one week versus a whole year, so the spike would be different. All right. The uh, recycling uh, coordinator news just gave it for your edification. Just talks about trash and recycling are essential services in uh, Connecticut, and. Uh, the, uh, one of the essential services, of course, is trash and recycling, collection, hauling, and processing. We um, and t we saw a uptick in uh, in uh, the use of the RCC, so we added a day temporarily. That, by the way, uh, is going to add to our costs, um, but it's something that that needed to be done. Uh, there was uh, the first Thursday that we were open; it was 30 some odd people. A, um, this past Tuesday was 150 people, uh, and we would expect uh, you know a large amount tomorrow. So we'll continue for the time being to keep the RCC open the three days a week, but it is a temporary situation, and one that was not budgeted for. One that also I uh, will try to get reimbursed by FEMA. Uh, let's see. Uh, What's in and what's out, uh, more on recycling, uh, and be aware of what you flush. You can't, they, even if they say that it's the uh, diaper wipes that you can uh, flush down the toilet, they're saying uh, not to do so because people are using an awful lot of uh, hand wipes now and it can clog sewer lines and cost a lot of money. John, I've got the tax collector's report. All right. The tax re collector's report for March 
is uh, the collection rate is 98.82 percent. Last year it was 98.25 percent. So uh, this, uh, uh, you know, the, so the number is pretty good. I would anticipate that we'll hit 99 percent, and I think uh, that would be the third out of five years that we've hit 99 percent. The Board of Finance uh, budgets 98 percent on the collection rate. Jim, on the very last page, it shows 99.82 percent. Is that something different, or where did that number come that, from? That includes the. Uh, I think that includes the interest overall, uh, and it's not uh, it, because the 98.82. Unless she's got a typo on on this page. Let's see, 1985753. Okay. Uh, I believe I, I believe the not, I not believe I know the 98.82 is correct. Okay. Sometimes that the other number that you were referring to includes the uh, back taxes and the interest, and it's not apples to apples. Uh, the, you know, I, there's a lot of awareness as well. There should be about social distancing. A resident was very concerned that there was a activity going on at the fire department uh, and didn't see a lot of social distancing. When I was made aware of it, I um, contacted the chief and the chief uh, took care of it. But it's just we've got to remind everybody, uh, wherever you're at, uh, and please make sure you're doing social distancing. Um, right now, although it could change tomorrow, but right now it looks like the curve uh, on the uh, uh, on the um, amount of cases is flattening out, and it's flattening out because of social distancing. So just because things are starting to get better doesn't mean that we have to give up our social distancing. Jim, while you mentioned the fire department, uh, I realize what you're saying here. I, I do want to uh, commend them for, I think it was this past weekend, uh, they had the Easter Bunny and the fire truck visiting yeah. uh, all the streets in the town, and uh, it seemed to be very well received by the community. It was extremely well received uh, by the community, absolutely. And uh, they also uh, for uh, for did a fit testing uh, for uh, of the mask for uh, some nursing home workers. And uh, so they're, they're in the community. They do a great job. Uh, and uh, my thanks to the fire department for all that they do. Uh, the uh, uh, Board of Education needed to come up with an audit correction plan, uh, and they did so. And I submitted it to the state of Connecticut. Uh, and uh, the uh, finding was a significant deficiency in internal control over financial reporting. There wasn't some reconciliation done that should have been done, and there's a system in place now that will prevent that from happening. The, uh, there also was a resident concern regarding the uh, uh, CABE policy that was approved and considered by the Board of Ed on March 23rd, uh, where uh, a lot of uh, decision-making ability was given directly to the superintendent. Uh, he just ex explained uh, uh, the answer, gave the answer to that based on information I got from the um, Board of Ed, and my understanding is the Board of Ed also reached out. How are we doing, John? Are we at minutes? Got everything. Got so far. I haven't even surfaced those other pieces yet, so I don't know what the heck happened to them. Uh, next order of business is 4A, which is the uh, minutes uh, for March 25th. I'll make a motion to make approve. A motion to approve. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three ayes. Unanimous. Okay, um, old business, 5A is tax incentives, no new news on that. Uh, school Town Building Committee report, uh, the uh, RFP uh, request for proposal for uh, electrical and air conditioning uh, engineering and proposal went out this week. Uh, so we're uh, trying to uh, get the air conditioning uh, uh, 
into Allgrove uh, this summer. That's a really tight timetable. Uh, we've been throwing almost a month off because of the coronavirus. So uh, we'll see where we are on that. The um, economic development report is we, uh, as mentioned before, we have an economic, uh, they're both part-time positions, both seven positions each. Uh, their titles are Economic Development Director of Marketing and Commercial Real Estate and Economic Development Director of Business Development. Uh, the, uh, uh, they joined us uh, last week and they've been reaching out to businesses and they're asking businesses, how are things going? Uh, are you still open? Are there layoffs? Is there anything we can do to uh, uh, help? They talk about uh, small business loans uh, and uh, they, uh, in, in towards that purpose, uh, I am participating on several of the phone calls, uh, three of which I'm taking tomorrow. So uh, we're reaching out to our, our, our businesses and uh, letting them know that we're here uh, and providing information where we can to assist them. Uh, the um, also Jim, uh, I had yeah. a question are they looking out to see if they can bring in any new business versus just contacting current businesses right now we're doing triage because of coronavirus but they absolutely they're going to be looking for new business but the most important thing we wanted to do is take the pulse of the folks that are out there now our businesses that are out there and uh, and see what we can do to help them and then absolutely they will be looking for new business and um, we uh, followed up with the state regarding the Bradley Development Zone application by one of our, our manufacturers. Uh, and I think we lit a fire and I think we should hear pretty soon. Jim, I got one more question. Every time I drive by the stub hub, I see the parking lot's completely full. Is there anything you can let us know about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, uh, it's temporarily, it's rental cars uh, and it's a being, the space is being used temporarily. Uh, because of uh, the lack of air traffic and they need to put the car somewhere. The landlord for StubHub uh, uh, let that happen. Okay, so so you drive by and you see all the cars. Unfortunately, it doesn't mean new business. Um, what it does mean is that it's a storage area right now because the car business is so slow. Uh, and rental car business is so slow. Okay. The next uh, order of business is, uh, and, and we don't mean to, it, first of all, it's new business and it's 6A, which is FY20 and 21, critical and non-critical capital items. Uh, we're going to need to get the chief involved. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned later on down is that, you know, we probably need to have a, a meeting, a special meeting, and one of the things that we would do is we would discuss the capital, and I, at that point I would want to get the uh, fire chief involved since a lot of the items are fire related items um, but uh, if you uh, take a look at the spreadsheet and it's um, so if you look at the current year 1920 by the way this is one of the questions that was asked to us by the Board of Finance um, and so it's uh, 1920 and then 2021 uh, so uh, we've completed the ATV uh, we've completed the whole mantra tools and we've completed the uh, community center upgrade. Um, so then um, there's other projects that are interested in the current year that we would normally go to a town meeting in June for. That would include the village center plan, several uh, fire items, um, some of which I know would be uh, essential, the air pack units and the air pack. Uh, bottle replacement, I believe, would be, but uh, I don't want to speak for the chief at this point. And then um, uh, there's hose replacement and apparatus data there. Um, looks to me like several of those would be things that could be deferred until the next year. Um, and then um, certainly the public safety HVAC upgrade uh, and the senior community center upgrade. Uh, we um, expect that those would be deferrable too. Uh, payroll accounting software, uh, you know, if we pushed it from one year into the next year, that's fine, but we've committed uh, ourselves to finding some software within the upcoming year, so sooner or later we're gonna need to, uh, to uh, 
to use that funds. But so, anyways, that's that that's briefly where we're at. Also, you know, we need to discuss about the fire capital study that we decided at one of our meetings. Uh, you know, we have to decide whether we consider that to be an essential or or something that could wait uh, into another year. So, when you add it all up, it's there's potential. Um, uh, of 147 to 351 thousand um, dollars, like I said, nothing we need to decide on tonight. Uh, it's just something that we'll discuss at our next meeting, and then we will provide that list to the board of finance. When you're looking on FY21, uh, you know the uh, we've got 44 thousand dollars for air pack units. Uh, we've got a, a a plow truck and a uh, one down. Uh, one-ton dump truck that might be deferrable. The minibus is 14 years old. Um, I wouldn't call it an emergency, but it could drop. It could stop working tomorrow because of its age. Although it's under good repair, so that could be on the bubble. So, anyways, uh, we were asked, uh, you know, 1920 and 2021 uh, to rate uh, our capital projects. So we'll do that at our, our next meeting. Jim, uh, I think we're going to have to do a lot of work on this because if you notice the uh, unemployment spike, a lot of people are in financial distress. So I don't think any of the items that we have here are something that we have to purchase within the year, next year or two. I mean, we will have to purchase some eventually, but this certainly, may be a time certainly will be a vigorous discussion. Yeah. yeah. Jim, what did John say? John uh, said that uh, you know, based on the unemployment rate that he had mentioned before, uh, you know, people are hurting, and he wanted to make sure that uh, he didn't see a lot of, if any, capital items that couldn't wait for a year or so. That pretty correct. Pretty accurate. Okay. Still can't hear. Jim, me. are are you hearing anything in any of your meetings on guidance? from either the governor or elsewhere or among mayors and first selectmen regarding potentially kind of freezing things except for keeping things going and making sure things don't deteriorate but is there any conversation like that occurring and do you think anticipate any guidance coming forward uh, probably no guidance coming forward. I mean, it's certainly, you know, we, we can be aware of what's going on in other communities, and there's a Farmington Valley collaborative meeting coming up pretty soon uh, where, you know, we'll, we always share that sort of information. Uh, but, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily look for any guidance from the governor because this is a municipal issue. So we'll have to, you know, we'll have to make the decision on what it is that, that we, well, actually the Board of Finance will make the decision on the money, but we certainly can give our recommendation and that's what I would suggest at the next meeting. I mean, we've got buildings that, you know, we've got part-timers that, that aren't working until they come back, uh, you know, until the, you know, the, the uh, with things get back to normal, we've got uh, buildings that we've, uh, we, you know, we've got the temperatures uh, in the uh, uh, in the unoccupied zone. Uh, we're doing what we can here and there to save dollars uh, on expenses. We'll continue to do that. I would anticipate that uh, we'll be able to turn back a very significant amount of money uh, because we'll make it happen to the board of finance uh, at the end of the fiscal year. So there's a lot of things that we already have in play that we're working. On, uh, but any direct guidance? Uh, no, are 169 pounds having the same conversation we are? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's kind of a, a little frightening because it seems like we're we're dealing with the state. Uh, it, it appears as though they're on top of everything and they're providing guidance for just about everything and thinking of most everything. Um, it, it just seems like the towns it's almost going to trickle down where the rubber meets the road is in the towns and uh, I, I know we've got something we're going to be talking about a little bit later but it just seems like um, it, it's really hard to forecast it's hard to predict a, at this point and you would think that kind of a conservative approach might be uh, something that would be recommended from the, from the state and you know, I think all three of us are on the same page, uh, uh, or at least the same sheet music, maybe not on all the individual items, but all three of us would opt for the conservative approach. 
so, some of the other some local of the other towns, local towns around, us around us are coming in with coming zero, in with zero increased, increased budgets. budgets. Well, it's not necessarily zero increased budget, uh, although that is a good goal. Uh, they're coming in at zero mill rate. Uh, and there is a difference if they use some cash to buy that down or if they had some other additional things. Yeah. And we certainly uh, uh, are in contact with CCM, the Connecticut uh, Council of Municipalities, and other organizations to see what's going on, and we give them additional information. So uh, there'll be more and more. I'm, re I'm reacting to a chat box that I just got that's asked of, you know, about reaching out to other towns, and that's how we do it is through the Connecticut Council of Municipality and the Council of Small Towns, of which I'm on the board of directors. Okay. Okay. Uh, 6B uh, is, uh, which again will be something we'll be working on at the at a different meeting. But I just wanted to start the uh, process. Right now, I've got it down to 1.1 percent, uh, and uh, we uh, I'm reviewing all lines. We'll sharpen the pencils, and as a board, we'll discuss all that at our next meeting. Of uh, I'm putting together some. Uh, some things we're watching utilities uh, like I said we were in the unoccupied mode uh, we reduced some part-time hours uh, the um, we reduced supplies uh, we're uh, uh, there's some areas that we're going to be spending money on uh, even though there's no baseball or soccer going on right now if you don't maintain the fields you're going to spend a ton of dough next year or the year after so there is some uh, you know there is some grooming of fields and things like that that are going on but we're cutting back wherever we can to save some dollars uh, and uh, make sure it shows up at the bottom line when we we end the fiscal year yeah one thing I wanted to say is uh, the uh, when the board of finance gave us guidance in the past it was prior to the corona outbreak so the budget you know the numbers were completely different now the people just can't afford it so we got to try to keep it as close to zero as we can if not maybe even go negative i uh, certainly uh, agree that the uh, that's part of the that part of uh, some confusion out there uh, at this point is um, this was a process with the Board of Finance. So the Board of Finance process is to listen to the boards and then give boards direction, and then the boards bring that those that direction back to them. Uh, the, the direction was given, as John said, prior to the coronavirus, uh, and so those were presented, but that doesn't mean those are the budgets that are going to go forward, and there's a considerable amount of the process left and um, we uh, you know certainly uh, I mean uh, I've uh, you know I've, I'm in uh, uh, conversation with the uh, bargaining units uh, I'm looking under every rock so. okay. and So Governor Lamont's Order 7S on the Municipality Program Election, and what that is, is uh, so the uh, Governor's Executive Order 7S, Section 6, called the Municipality Program Election, and what it is, is it provides two programs that would benefit residents uh, of communities and the board of, in this case, the board of selectmen can choose at least one. You have to choose at least one or both programs. And uh, I was going to give you a recommendation tonight, but uh, on the low, end, so there's two programs, the deferment program where uh, a deferment of up to 90 days on uh, taxes on real property, uh, real estate, personal property, uh, all that, uh, all those uh, motor vehicles. So there would be a 90-day um, grace period. So currently there's a 30-day grace period. So the bills are due July 1st and you have until August 2nd to pay the bill. 
uh, this would uh, may extend it to October 2nd. So people would not, if they took two extra months to pay, they would not pay any interest, uh, so they would, uh, or penalty, and it's 18 and a half, uh, 18 percent penalty. So that's called the deferment program, and um, the uh, people, this isn't for everybody in town, it's for people that can uh, sign an affidavit uh, and fill out a form that shows that they uh, have been significantly affected, their income has been significantly affected by the, the coronavirus uh, um, crisis, and uh, it's uh, been affected uh, by 20%. So there are some, and, and this is evolving. Um, two days ago, uh, if we were having this meeting, the, the, the word was uh, it would be for everybody. Then they backed off on that and said, no, it's not for everybody. It's for those that are, would be income eligible if they had a 20% hit on their income. So there would be more to come on that, but that certainly sounds like something that would be a really good thing for the community. And then the other is the low interest rate program. And um, so the normal rate is 18%. And it would, for the 90 days, it would take it down to 3%. So somebody that was delinquent in their taxes would only be paying 3% per annum per year as opposed to 18% per year. And um, the, uh, that is a logistical nightmare that looks like that might be getting solved uh, where, uh, with some software from uh, the uh, provider of the software for the tax collector's office. So that's one reason why I, it was recommended to me by our town attorney who I've been working with trying to understand these programs uh, that we hold off voting on it. Uh, so and, and there's more information that, that is going to be coming to it. So the, um, the concern on the low interest rate is the logistics and staffing and technology. Uh, if the technology is taken care of, then that may be something that we may want to also do. So it would lower the, for 90 days, it would lower the interest rate uh, on, on delinquent and the deferment program would uh, advance the grace period from 30 days to 90 days before the penalty would be charged. So. Jim, a couple of questions. Wouldn't the far majority of payments be made by banks through escrow accounts? Uh, there's $5,470,000, uh, I was waiting for you to ask me, uh, is in escrow last year. Uh, and uh, we, uh, uh, so, you know, we collect about 20 million, uh, so it's about 25%. Uh, so that 5 million would be 2.5 million because, you know, you, you're, if you're going towards the cash flow idea, that's where I was looking. So, you know, roughly 2.5, 2.7 million is, uh, would come in in the month of July. Uh, so we have the, you know, our cash balance and we'd have that, which would get us through. But then we're looking, we're modeling excuse me, we're modeling to see if it would get us through 90 days. So well, one of the, the concerns could be that if banks find that mortgage payments aren't being made, and there was some talk that one third of all mortgage payments weren't being made, that that somehow could also impact the escrow balances or the banks may choose to kind of put that off if, if they can. The OPM is very clear uh, that the uh, that the 90 day grace period does not apply to escrow and, uh, and to answer your question uh, the banks reserve escrow so they've you know it's not going to be an issue of this uh, t this tax period, it could be an issue, you know, in the future okay. tax period. And this is something that the Board of Finance is trying to get their arms around, too. They're trying to look at collection rate. They're trying to look at, you know, other things like that. Okay. The uh, next order of business is the teacher's contract. Uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen has uh, three choices. Did I skip anything, John? Or? Oh, Not that I'm aware of. Okay, good. Uh, it's just you were flipping through the paper. You just I'm trying to get to that. <laughs> the, uh, so the uh, teacher contract was approved on uh, March 27th. Uh, well, it was delivered to the town clerk March 27th. And so then there's a clock that starts ticking. Uh, and uh, the Board of uh, Selectmen has 30 days that they decide 
whether to take uh, A to do nothing to the contract so that it, it ratifies, uh, or B, they, uh, take it to town meeting, um, and uh, for well, it wouldn't be uh, it would be town meeting for a vote. So uh, at this point, uh, we've got some time. We've got t uh, potentially two meetings before we need to make a decision. I have asked the board a, of uh, finance for a. I'm sorry, the board of education. I have asked them for a. Um, a executive summary of uh, what the, uh, or a PowerPoint at least, of what the budget, uh, of what the uh, contract is, entails, although John, I'm sure you're very familiar with it. Yeah, I can tell you, it, it includes like a 3% increase in salary. I, I can't hear John. John said that it, include, it, it includes about it includes a 3% percent percent increase, increase in salaries. And salaries. It's not something, it's not that, something that we can afford, that we can afford at this time. I think that this think thing that definitely should be brought, should to, brought the to the public, the public for a vote. For a vote. John, was this uh, resolved in arbitration or mediation? It was resolved, it was resolved just, just as, arbitration as arbitration was about, was to, start. about to start. We were, so in we were in arbitration, but we never, but we never actually, actually went, went into, went arbitration. into arbitration. arbitration. Okay. Because I, I guess where I was going is that if it was resolved through arbitration, we would need to find out what options that allows us. If it wasn't in arbitration, then I, I could see where you're coming from. I just didn't know if arbitration prevented anything further from happening with this. Arbitration, arbitration still allows, still allows us to go through. Us to go through. We if we have two-thirds majority, two majority vote against, vote it, against it, it, then it goes back, it goes to, back the to the arbitrators. But it never reached arbitration, so that that's not an issue, John? Or? Right. I believe it's yeah. not. Okay, well, we, we'll certainly get all those clarifications. Uh, yeah, I'd appreciate that. And uh, and then, uh, we, so we have 30 days to make a decision on what we want to do. Uh, from the 27th, which takes it uh, to the 24th, uh, to the 26th, rather, uh, which is a Sunday, so we we'll get back up to uh, April 24th, and we have uh, uh, potentially two meetings between now and then. One of the things that we'd also have to come up with is a way, if, if we were to go uh, present it to the town, how would it be acted upon? Well, yeah, and, and the, that's the other thing is there's been several meetings and, and deadlines that have been pushed back 90 days. So the town attorney is looking to see if that is one of those where we, we could, you know, we could go in midsummer. Uh, because once we, as a board of selectmen, call for a town meeting, uh, it's got to happen in two weeks. So if we if we're allowed to push the deadline out and then do it, you know, when presumably things are back to normal. Okay. And if that were to occur, I would imagine that the existing contract would remain in place. I'm I'm not sure about that. Uh, if um, that is usually what happens uh, on our side uh, until we get an agreement. Uh, but right now they've got a tentative agreement that may or may not be ratified by the town. Okay. Nothing's easy over on that side of the woods. No. <laughs> the, um, I would say, uh, unless you want, well, actually, we're supposed to have answers back to the, um, we're supposed to have answers back to the Board of Finance next week regarding, uh, you know, budget opportunities and capital opportunities. So I would recommend that we have a meeting, a special meeting, a week from today on April 15th, and then that means on Thursday, April 16th, I can give the Board of Finance the answers to the questions, and that would give them five or six days to review. Uh, so. Uh, is uh, is that something that I both of you would be available for? I have another meeting at seven, but uh, if we can do it earlier, I'd be available. Available. Okay. I, Joe, I'll say Joe, I can, I'll be, say available I can be available if we do it earlier. We do it earlier. Yeah, uh, that's fine with me. My big concern is the key to this is going to be the conversation with the fire chief. So how is that going to be facilitated? Well, I was going to invite the fire chief to our meeting. Uh, prior to that, I'll do some legwork with them. But I was going to suggest that the fire chief uh, zoom in. Okay. Is 
having it on a Wednesday and the Board of Finance meeting on a Thursday, cutting it too close? No, it's that following Tuesday, Joe. Oh, okay. So we would have a number of they days. Would have, so they would have, have, yeah, they would have five days before their meeting to consider what we tell them if when we come to consensus next Wednesday, for example. But what if we don't, for some reason, come to consensus next Wednesday? Uh, it's a steel cage match. Uh, we need to come to consensus. We got Thursday. We got Friday. What if we need more information? Um, we could have a special meeting on Friday. I'm just trying to to give them. You know, ideally, I'd like to give them a week's worth of notice. Uh, but uh, the board of finance. But uh, at this point, uh, I, I don't see that happening. We, we won't do anything until we're ready to do it. And if that means we meet a couple times next week, we'll meet a couple times next week. Okay. But I will, uh, I, I will uh, talk to the chief and get whatever information uh, that we need. Yes, and if, the, if any information is available prior to the meeting or, or whatever, I'd appreciate it. Just um, this is a tough situation because uh, it's emergency services. We, yeah, on one hand, you need to make sure they have what they need, uh, you know, to protect people and to help people. And on the other hand, you're looking at this situation, which is unpredictable, highly unusual, uh, and an emergency situation. So um, it, it could be a, a little difficult to uh, analyze everything and come to some conclusions. I will uh, do the best I can with the chief to get uh, preliminary information ahead of time, and we uh, also can make him available if need be. Okay, and what time? Uh, if uh, you've got a seven o'clock. How about five? Five, we can do five. How about five for you, Joe? Five o'clock? I thought you were going with seven in the morning. So five o'clock. <laughs> oh, that's, okay. that was the look of horror on your face, okay. Five p.m. So five p.m., okay. Okay. So it'll be the uh, um, April 15th at 5 p.m. special meeting. And I will reach out to the chief tomorrow and get as much information as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's public it. Public comment. It's public comment. You got to unmute. Paul, have I got you muted or you unmuted? You've I, just... I want to comment. You betcha, baby. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I know these are difficult times, but um, it, it seems like you guys are, are just not taking this seriously enough. I mean, we're in the ma midst of a major economic crisis, never mind having to deal with the virus as well. And yet I see people delaying or not doing actions or or not cutting capital projects and, and, and just sitting on their hands. And uh, this is not the time to be doing that. Uh, this is the time to be get serious about you know, what we're going to do. And the fact that there are still budget increases on the board is, is ridiculous at this point. I mean, I have two people out of work at my house right now, okay? How many people uh, are, uh, have been let go at the town? Can you answer that question, Jim? How many people have we laid off? We have not laid anybody off. Well, that is, that, that, that's telling of what the attitude is of what's going on there at the town right now, okay? There are non-essential people that, there's state programs, there's federal funds. I have two people out of work. They've applied for unemployment. Our non-essential employees at the town should be doing the same. We are no different. Why are we any different than any other business that's out there? Why do we still think that we can have a budget increase? Why do we think we can carry on with Greenway and Ballfield projects? I just find it ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I hope you guys get serious about it soon because the economic crisis hasn't happened yet, but it will very quickly. So you guys need to get your ducks in the line. This is not goodness. I, I would strongly recommend all non-essential services and employees be right now let go until we figure out what the impact's gonna be. You, you can't just keep doing business as usual. 
because it's not business as usual and I'm impacted. So please do us a favor, figure out a way to have a 0% budget increase and make sure that we're not spending anything except on essential services at this time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other public comment? Um, I guess I just say, obviously I worry about what the state is going to trickle down to us at the end of this. Um, and I understand it's an economic crisis, but I also just want to thank all of the selectmen for thinking long term because once this is over, you still we still have to run the town, we still have to run schools, we still need to maintain what we have. Um, and it's important to be able to see the long term goal of the town, not just you know what's happening now. But I, you do have to look at a budget too. So um, you know, I just appreciate you being conscientious of both things because you know you can't be short sighted as far as what you want for for our town. Um, as far as the town employees are concerned, um, I, that's a, another hard thing. I, I, I trust you guys to make a good decision because, again, when you cut employees, you're cutting somebody's job. So um, whatever you can do to maintain and get through this, I just appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Any other comments? I have another comment. Can I talk again? Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, can you just... I, I know you probably don't want to get into this a lot, but just um, as far as, you know, I know people will talk about a zero budget increase, but um, I, is there a difference in doing a zero budget increase? And then you had mentioned about doing a zero mill rate. I assume you mean a zero mill rate increase. A zero, Can you just explain that a little bit better? Sure. The a 0% increase in expenses is flat to the current year. A 0% mill rate is flat to the current year, but there's ways to get that besides 0% uh, operating budgets. You can put some cash in reserves into it. You could have had a one-time event where you were spending some money that you're not in the following year. So a 0% zero, a zero operating to me is more relevant than the 0% uh, mill rate because if you get a 0% operating, you're gonna get the 0% mill rate unless there was some surprise, or in, in, in surprise with quotation marks because it would be a planned expense. You know, this year we're, we've got the, the note for the, the bonding project. Next year we've got the note, but the following year we're going to have uh, a, a regular 15-year bond, and it, that, you know, there's gonna be more money we're gonna be spending in that third year, the third year out than we are currently. So those sorts of things happen too that can affect the mill rate. Okay. All right, Joe, were you starting to say something? Or? Yeah, I just, uh, I, I wanna thank you, Jim, for your efforts. This is a very extraordinary time. Uh, I also wanna thank the other folks at, at Town Hall and Public Works and, and what have you. Um, it's one of those times when it's not just going to work. There are times when you're taking risks and um, you know I, I I really thank everyone for doing that and in particular uh, those folks on the ambulance corps the fire department the police department um, you can't thank those people enough at this time and while it's uh, you know a health crisis it's you have to look at the economic side but uh, I, I think people are really important and we need to uh, keep them in mind and all that they're doing and you know, it's, it's not only the town. You, you look at people who work in grocery stores now much differently than you ever did before because of what they're doing. Uh, I, I'm continuing to be really impressed uh, by the way everybody seems to be coming together, recognizing the uh, severity of the situation and volunteering and doing all that they can do. Uh, and, and I think this is um, an unprecedented time that's changing very rapidly. And we all have to pull together. We all have to help each other. We all have to think of each other. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's working so hard. Thank you. Any other public comment? Is there a motion? So we don't need executive motion session. to adjourn. Uh, oh, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, there is no need for the executive session, Joe. Now, 
So you made the motion, John? I'll second. I'll All second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And you'll stand, Jim, and if anyone has any questions. I yeah. don't know if anyone has any. Yeah. Uh, Marcos, did you have any questions for Jim? Or are you good? I should say that the adjournment oh, was 739. I had, I had no questions, but thank you. Thank you, Marcos. Appreciate you hanging in there for the whole thanks for, thing. Yeah, thanks for staying on for the thank whole you. thing. All right, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you very much.